And in business news, latest 2023 financial reports filed by Africa's Global Bank, United Bank for Africa, PLC, and the Nigerian Exchange Limited reveals that gross earnings leaped from 853.2 billion recorded at the end of 2022 to 2.08 trillion naira in 2023, representing a 143% growth. The bank's total assets are also rose by 90.2% to close at 20.65 trillion naira in December. UBS profit before tax recorded an exponential growth of 277%, closing 2023's financial year at 758 billion naira compared to 201 billion naira in 2022, while profit after tax surged by 257% from 170 billion in 2022 uh, to 608 billion in 2023. The group share with the fund also rose to 922 billion naira in 2022 compared to 2 trillion naira in 2023 a 20.2% growth compared to the previous year. Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer of UBS Group, Mr. Oliver Lauba, uh, restates the bank's commitment to sustainable growth and expansion of market shares to meet the expectations of various shareholders. In the same vein, according to Wema Bank PLC's audited financial results for year 2023, the bank recorded 196% profit before tax growth from 14.75 billion naira to 43.59 billion naira, with a deposit growth of 60% to 1.86 trillion naira from 1.16 trillion naira in full year of 2022. Commercial Bank also proposed a dividend of 50 cobo per share compared to 30 cobo in 2022, while four 40 billion naira for a tranche of capital raised that awaits final regulatory approvals, which actively positions the bank for the new capital licensing requirement of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer of Wema Bank, Mr. Morufu Seni, acknowledged that 2023 showcased a revitalized Wema Bank with 72% improvements in gross earnings as total assets rising by 56% and earnings per share at 279 naira 5 kobo. Mr. Hosseini also expressed satisfaction with the bank's performance in the first year of a new leadership team and promised to develop platforms and supporting initiatives that prioritize the needs of customers, leveraging technology to solve problems across all sectors. Now, an expert have called for the need to explore opportunities in the nation's export sector. The acting director general of the Nigerian America Chamber of Commerce, uh, that's Ms. Wofia Samuel, while speaking on our flagship business program earlier today, Business Nigeria, stressed the need for Nigeria to streamline its export products for exchange of value. But gradually, we're beginning to look at other sectors, manufacturing. What are we manufacturing we think America can get? Let me give you a practical example. So we had some Americans from the U.S. coming to see how they could possibly manufacture some of their, uh, what's the word now, some of their equipment in Nigeria at less, uh, at cost-effective yeah, prices. Yeah. The same quality, the same standard, but at cost-effective prices. That way, you're creating jobs for us. You're creating jobs for Nigeria. You're expanding our market, but you're maintaining the same you're maintaining the same quality. I mean, I've seen, I've seen a lot of American companies do this with so many other countries. Why are they not doing that with Nigeria? So that's one aspect we can expand, the aspect of manufacturing. I'm a huge advocate of the agricultural sector, the manufacturing sector. But to also just um, finalize the point, uh, my response to the question you've asked, um, U.S. has a, a framework for Africa. There's a framework U.S. created in 2000 for Africa. So we need to, re we, we need to return to that framework and then see what areas America is interested in, what are the products, what are the services, what are the commodities you think they, they desire. Because at the end of the day, every country has their priorities. Every country has their priority products. So you just cannot be exporting everything. You're producing and ex wanting to export everything to the U.S. What are the priority sectors? Look through the framework for Africa and then re um, see through what America would like to have Nigeria export to them. Make sure it's up to quality and then we can run the test. An expert has also called for concerted efforts and collaborations to address the nation's economy. Chief Executive Officer of Financial Nigeria International, Convener of Nigerian Development and Finance Forum, Mr. Gidi Akin today, while commending the fiscal management of federal government and its impact on the economy, he says the efforts of government are beginning to yield results. He was also on Business Nigeria earlier today. What are the priorities yes. of the government? And we have understood from just um, um, looking at the commitments that the government has made that the government is interested in enhanced fiscal management. 
in yes. Nigeria mm -hmm. to create um, um, economic growth as well as poor job creation. Now, we also know that there is a lot of efforts, and all Nigerians say this now, that um, at the CBN, there is a renewed focus on macroeconomic stability. You know, so we have seen certain policies that have been addressed at um, bringing down inflation, yes. for instance. We have seen some movement, initially upward movements in the foreign exchange rate. And now we see that the exchange rate is coming down. But people are not very certain, for instance, that what is the band that the exchange rate would eventually stabilize on, for instance? We don't know that, you know. And these things are very, very important, important. for investors, for people who want to bring money it's into it's the system. Yes. You know, so what we have done is to invite the governor of the central bank, Mr. Olayemi Kadoso, to give a keynote address on this issue so that um, CBN itself can continue to communicate its outlook, mm -hmm. you know, with, uh, with the market. Asian stocks traded higher today on phase by ratings downgrade to China by Fitch, which triggered a mild domestic sell-off as the world's second biggest economy struggles to mount a solid post-COVID recovery. In early European trades, the pan-region Eurostock 50 features were up 0.55%. German DAX features up 0.39%. FTSE features were up 0.64%. U.S. stock features and S&P 500 were up 0.1%. MSCI's broadest index of Asian Pacific shares outside Japan up 0.48% after U.S. stocks ended the previous session with mild gains. Chinese blue chip CSR 300 index was up 1.11% after the earlier opening flat, while Shanghai Composite was down 1%. Meanwhile, Hong Kong Hang Seng index escaped selling and was trading at up 1.45%. Australian shares were up 0.3%, while Japan's Nikkei stock index was down 0.55%. And wrapping up the news now, oil prices, uh, U.S. West Texas intermediate crude rose to sell at $85.54 per barrel with an uptick of 0.36%. Brent crude features experienced an upward margin of 0.36%, selling at $89.74. Bonnie Large credit the price decline of 0.13, selling at $92.26. OPEC basket dealers are offering $90.29 with a downward price review of 0.91%. That's business.